Hey, everybody. Happy New Year and welcome to CAF's Heroes of Sport. My name is Bob Abbott, co-founder of the Challenge Athletes Foundation. And every week, you'll meet some of the most amazing challenged athletes on the planet. Our next guest, visually impaired track and field star, Mr. Joel Gomez, joins us. Joel, how you doing? Pretty good, Bob. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Hey, so talk a little bit. You just ran sub four for 1500 because I know you've been going after that for a while. Yeah, it's been a big goal of mine for the past, I'd say, year and a half. And uh, this past October in 2020, uh, I was finally able to get under that uh, threshold. Uh, it was pretty much as close as it could get with 359, about 0.35 for the for the nanoseconds there. So for our for our viewers, talk a little bit about uh, the blue cone monochromacy. Monochromacy, yeah. Chromacy, monochromacy. Explain so basically, the effect of that on you. Sure, sure. Um, well, basically, I'm colorblind, and it's kind of a strange type of colorblindness. It's not like red, green, or anything like that. Um, it's more so uh, blue, purple, yellow, green, red, black, that type of stuff. So, like for example, if there's orange cones on a grass field. I, I can't see them. So that's always been a challenge with cross country and that type of stuff. Um, and I also have very poor visual acuity. Um, uh, I'm legally blind. And for example, I, I can't see, I, I can see you and uh, I can see that you're on the screen, but I can't see you in detail. So you could be any person basically. <laughs> so basically if I'm in a dark movie theater and I walk out of that theater into the bright light, that's sort of what you're seeing. Exactly, exactly. That as well, uh, photosensitivity, yeah, a bit of that. Um, but I don't, I don't normally wear sunglasses. I, I, I don't really like glasses at all. Um, I, I don't wear them uh, in the classroom or like just for daily life. Um, I don't know why. It's just kind of. Um, oh, screen went off. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just don't. Uh, they don't help. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Early on, you were playing soccer. And your yeah. goal was, I'm going to play in World Cup. And exactly. I'm going to be a soccer player. When did that dream sort of dissipate and running come into your life? I, I was about 10 when I kind of uh, started to realize the game just became much more competitive uh, because everybody grows up, the ball goes faster, people just play it a lot more competitively. Um, and I just realized that it's probably not going to be my path. Um, so my parents actually recommended that I try running because uh, they saw how fast I was on the soccer field. And I, I was, I was able to get from one end of the field to the other, but I just wouldn't be able to see the ball. <laughs> so basically uh, that's when I tried out running with a local running club, the San Diego Waves. And then from then on, I, I, I stuck with running. Well, how old were you when you broke five for the mile for the first time? I was an eighth grader, uh, which is, I, I wasn't really aware of how big of a deal that is, but like uh, a sub five as an eighth grader, uh, apparently the running world makes a kind of big deal about that. Uh, yeah, 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 that was. Uh, that was amazing. Um, that was a fun race. Like I, I came down the final stretch and I didn't think I was going to be able to make it, but uh, I just dipped under S similar to the sub four fifteen hundred, <laughs> like th five or uh, four fifty nine basically was my time. That is so cool. Um, <laughs> and when 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 I look at what you did in two thousand nineteen, two thousand nineteen was really a big breakout year for you, right? Junior yeah, championships, yeah. gold at four hundred and fifteen hundred. Then you go to you go to uh, you go to the Parapans and you get second there in the fifteen hundred. You get eleventh in the world in Dubai. First of all, would you have ever thought here you are traveling to Dubai and traveling to Lima, Peru, to pursue your dream? Uh, I had no idea that that was going to happen. It it, it it came out of the blue, and it was uh, it's such an amazing experience. Um, yeah, that was just it was surreal. Did that make you realize, okay, Paralympics are really, it's, it's there. I can get there. Exactly. I, basically, yeah, it was just a, it was a great confidence boost. Um, and uh, placing 11th in Dubai, uh, it definitely, I mean, it, it was a little bit of a disappointment. I, I didn't really have too much time to prepare because I found out that I made the team about six weeks before the, the actual race. And I had I'd taken about four weeks off until that announcement. So yeah. I didn't have enough time to build a base or anything, but uh, for Tokyo, I'm, I'm aiming for the podium. That's for sure. And where do you stand in terms of making the team? Is it that in Minneapolis where you guys will go to the trials and find out if you make the team or not? Yeah. Basically, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be a high school season. Hopefully there will be. 
Um, and basically, I'm going to use that in preparation and hopefully run some fast times for the 1500. And then in Minneapolis, I, I have to go compete there to secure my spot on the team. What's the most challenging part when you're, you run cross country and track and yes. cross country, you're talking rocks, you're talking trees, you're talking all sorts of different stuff. <laughs> track, you've got the other runners, uh, you've got to differentiate there. What, what's the biggest challenge? Um, well, so I haven't run cross country in about two years. I, I do love it. it. It's unique from track, meaning like it's a different course every time you're racing to win. You're not racing for time, uh, basically. Um, I'd say with cross country, the most difficult thing, uh, is the dust surprisingly. Um, yeah. basically, basically it's, you're running in a herd of runners. <laughs> it's like a stampede. The, the dust, it's literally a cloud of dust, like what you'd see in a cartoon. Um, so that's one of the most challenging things, uh, the divots, uh, the markings on where to turn. And I, I often have to walk the course before every single race I do, or we go out a week before to the course and I walk the course from, uh, just to get a feel for it. Um, so that's, I'd say the most complicated thing with, uh, cross country for track. Um, I'd say it's actually the starting position, uh, because in the 1500, we start on a waterfall. Um, I do not like to start on, uh, in lane one or basically the first three lanes as it uh basically the runners it, it's like running in a herd again it, you, your your reaction time has to be really quick they, like otherwise you'll be falling you'll fall um so normally on track i like to start out in lane seven or so and then slowly make my way in uh that's that's i'd say the biggest challenge with track though You've been a big supporter of our uh, CAF adaptive track and field program. You've, you've been out there pretty much every time we have something going on the track. How important has CAF been in terms of just your maturation as a runner and realizing that there is there are other people out there like you that need support? Well, I, I just love how CAF brings challenged athletes together. Um, it, it really is a source of empowerment. And honestly, the opportunities that they provide, such as the adaptive uh, track and field program for high school athletes, it, it really it demonstrates to uh, others who are challenged uh, that there are, there are infinite opportunities. You started out in terms of music. You went from violin to piano to ukulele. How, how do you combine all of that? Because you're teaching ukulele. You're obviously trying to make the Paralympic team. How do you balance music and and your other pursuits? Uh, it can be a lot sometimes, that's for sure. Um, basically, just having a really balanced, uh, just doing my best to balance my schedule uh, is the, the only way to get around it. Um, I, normally, I just try to get my run done in the morning, and then I head home, do my schoolwork, and then normally I teach ukulele in the, ukulele in the early afternoon. And then uh, maybe a second run in the afternoon as well. So it's basically just the timing of it all. I just got to plan ahead, basically plan the week ahead. And maybe on Sunday, I see I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. And that's how I work it all out. So I'm sure at some point, uh, Coach Joakim Cruz mentioned to you that, hey, you have the potential to not only make the Paralympic team, but down the line, maybe 2028, when the Olympics are in LA, you could make the Olympic team as well. Is that a goal? It's definitely a goal. Yeah. I, I mean, the focus is on Tokyo, uh, Tokyo for 2020, but uh, who knows where it'll go afterwards. I mean, uh, I'm pretty young, so uh, there's always room for improvement. So I'm, I'm excited to see where my running career takes me. Yeah. So in, I think Marla Runyon in 2000 became the first legally blind track and field athlete to qualify and compete in the Olympic team after she'd won five golds at the yeah. Paralympics. So exactly, she, she's a little bit of a mentor for you. It can be. Exactly. I definitely, I look up to her. I read her book, uh, which I highly recommend to everybody who's listening. Uh, Marla Runyon's book is, it's, it's truly inspiring. Um, yes, yeah, we have a lot of uh, things in common, that's for sure. <laughs> so your song, Running Blind, why not run through the shadows, run through your fears? It's okay to be running blind. Uh, Talk a little bit about that part of, you know, just taking your thoughts and turning them into song. Uh, so basically, I'll, I kind of I'll just start from the beginning. Uh, running Blind, it basically encompasses my uh, transition from running uh, or playing soccer to running. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just run through your first, basically, uh, it's kind of hard to describe, but basically just to take things head on, just go, just basically not worry what people think and just do what you love and not to worry. Basically just run blind. 
have you had issues with kids bullying and things like that? Or have you been able to avoid that? In soccer, a little bit, I did, um, because I'd, I'd actually be afraid of the ball sometimes because it just come out of nowhere and I'd duck, and uh, that, that would kind of lead to some uh, teasing a little bit. But uh, overall, I, not really. No, not too much. Are you seeing more awareness for challenged athletes now than, I listen, you're only 17 years old. It's not like you, you have a lot <laughs> to see. But have you seen more acceptance and more awareness than there was when you were you know, 11, 12, 13 years old? I, I definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, there's been some amazing strides made for sure. When I looked at, watched the video from Parapans and watched you get the silver there, how excited were you to, one, that just, that's an international competition and getting second there. At this one thing, 11th in the world is awesome, but when you're on the podium at, uh, at the Parapans, that's pretty darn special. That, it was an amazing experience in Lima. Uh, and honestly, the, the race was, I, I was just hoping to get on the podium, maybe even a bronze. I was just hoping for that. And then the race turned out to be a tactical one. And that's, that's what I'm, my strength is tactical racing. Uh, I'm not that much of a time trailer. I, I love to race to win. I love the sprint finishes. Um, and uh, so I took the opportunity to basically, I, I went a little early, um, a little bit of a tactical error. I maybe could have won, but uh, I was super happy with the silver because honestly, I was yeah, I was just hoping for a bronze. When yeah. I, when I uh, when I've talked to Marla Run in the past, she talks about you know running in a group and having to go by what she hears, right? And the foot strikes and people's breathing patterns. How do you read the competition because you know you really can't see them? I'd say the, I use the crowd, uh, the energy of the crowd. Um, and just listening for cheers, like basically if, if I hear them all cheering, it means somebody must be close to me, uh, basically, uh, that's, that's one thing. And then also definitely the breathing of, uh, my uh, fellow athletes on the track. Yeah, that's, that's basically how I can tell where everybody is. Was this a positive for you? The fact that the Paralympics were delayed a year, giving you a little more time, a little much more much, uh, time to become better at your craft? Definitely. Um, basically if I, if I went to the Tokyo Paralympics this year, um, it would have probably turned out very similar to Dubai. Um, I wouldn't have podium. Maybe I, I would have done slightly better than Dubai, maybe sixth or seventh. Um, but I think getting this extra year to train, it gives me a real chance of actually getting on the podium. What would it mean to you to win the gold medal in Tokyo? It, it would mean a lot. It would definitely it, it justify all the hard work. That's for sure. Um, and it'd just be, it'd just be amazing. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting to see how the race plays out. I'm excited for that. Um, uh, one of the uh, athletes, uh, Jared Clifford, he's the Australian who won in Dubai. Um, he's been doing really well lately. So uh, it's going to be difficult to beat him, but I'm excited to try. How important is it for you to be that role model for the next Joe Gomez, for that kid who's just is, is losing his sight and doesn't realize what's what's next for him. I mean, I love to inspire others. And I, like if I had a message to, let's see that, just, <laughs> if, I had a message, if I had a message to tell to younger athletes is just uh, stay strong, stay persistent, and just don't give up, basically. Um, there's uh, just an opportunity will always uh, come to light. One other line, I think, from the song was, we see more when the eyes are covered. What does that mean? I'd say that means that um, our, our vision is a very key aspect. But uh, I guess, let me think about that real quick for a second. Sure. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I'd say you have to... There's more to vision uh, about somebody, um, meaning we all have a soul. We all have our, our, our character. And I'd say that what the, that's what that line is, meaning you don't need to see to truly feel emotions and to, um, I guess, uh, believe in something. Awesome. Hey, Joel, thank you so much for taking time. It's wonderful to have you part of the CAF family. And thank you for joining us on Heroes of Sport. It's been awesome to catch up with you. And congrats on going 359, brother. That is your crank. And next thing you know, it's going to be 348. Yep, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.
Joel Gomez has been our guest again, Heroes of Sport, this Challenged Athletes Foundation. My name is Bob Babbitt. We'll see you guys next time.